kind of glad I'm going early because I've never done this and I'm kind of nervous and I, I would not enjoy myself all night if I had to go last. <laughs> all right, um, to begin. Between, nine, well, between 1981 and 1992, I used to live in Southern California and I was the only person I knew that vacationed in Upper Darby. <laughs> For those years, I was the tourist industry for Upper Darby. I, um, I grew up here, however. I grew up in Upper Darby. I grew up right across from Monsignor Bonner High School. And we, it was a great place to grow up. I learned that um, you know, everything I knew about life, I learned from Delaware County and from Upper Darby and from our neighborhood. And if you grew up in the 70s, I graduated in 79. If you grew up in the 70s, you know, we, we hear it all the time, it was a very different life. We lived on the streets. We were outside all the time, and that was not always a good thing, because when we became teenagers, we were still outside all the time. And I didn't know this until I left, but growing up in the 70s, Upper Darby was a tough town. I mean, a tough town. I mean, you had to be tough. We were tough. We lived on the streets. Upper Darby was in a transitional period. And you know every neighborhood had a, not a gang, but you certainly had a group. We weren't a gang, but we were a group. And we had about seven or eight guys you could pull together every Friday night and every Thursday night and every Wednesday night. And every night it was like, we're going out, Mom. And that was it. And you went out. And you didn't know what could happen when you went out. And we went out. And there were neighborhoods who had similar kids who were just, you knew their names. And if we needed like 12 guys, we could get up a football game. And those football games usually ended up in fights. There were a lot of fights. There were fights after school. There were fights in the woods behind Upper Darby. These were well-attended affairs. <laughs> and they, there were fights after the Bonner Mixer every time. I mean, it, the things that we did, I would, I would never allow my kids to do. And I, I hope they never see this. <laughs> it was a tough town. And we had, you know, out on the street, like one well-placed racial slur could, could cause a fight. And we weren't, you know, we would go out and like the things that we would get into, we had a repertoire of things you would do on a Thursday night or a Friday night. It was, what do you want to do tonight? Well, you could score some beer and go sit in the woods and drink it, or you could, go to the Bonner Mixer, and every time I suggest that, it was, no, that's gay. It didn't strike me as a gay pursuit to go to the Bonner Mixer. I mean, that was sort of like, you know, a perfectly heterosexual like pursuit to me, but I didn't understand that, but that's what they told me. And we've always wanted to go after the Bonner Mixer to harass the girls and see if there was a fight. So it struck me as, I didn't realize it was a tough town until I left it. And I left when I was 19. And then I realized that the whole world wasn't like this. And you know, I loved Upper Darby, obviously. I mean, I'm here. But when I left and came back, that's when I got a whole new perspective on Upper Darby. You don't know this when you live and you grow up in it. It's just your town, and you love it. And I didn't realize it was such a tough town until I left it. And then I came back. I came back after two years for the first time I came back. And I began to realize how tough a town it was when my brother picked me up at the airport. And he picked me up at the airport, and I, I have six brothers, and two of them came to meet me at the airport. And they met me at the airport, and one of them, I got my bag, and my brother's walking in front of me, and he's walking like this. <laughs> and I realized, we all walk like that. <laughs> it's what I call the Delco strut. <laughs> and we all had it. I, I, I lost it as soon as I left Delco, but I realize now why we had it. Because when you walk down the street, you had to have attitude. You had to like not be a victim. You had to like pers you had to like personify tough, and everybody walked like that. Some people put like a bounce in it. You could put a, you could put a bounce in it, but we all had it. And when I left, and my brother met me at the airport, I'd come back after two years. I went to Southern California. I didn't go to Southern California to keep it Upper Darby real. When I came home, I got off the airplane. I had all my like Madras shorts and my Duran Duran t-shirt and my Van sneakers. And the first thing my brothers looked at me, he looked at me and he said, lose the fanny pack, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So I went back to Upper Darwin. I noticed everybody had this strut, and I began to like really notice the way people smoked and the way they drove and the way they walked and they talked. And it, it really occurred to me that like I forgot that you know it's kind of a tough town. I went to my, I went to his house, and I spent the night at his house. And I'm in, lying on the couch, and I look up, and there's a possum staring in the door at me. And he lived on Guilford Road in a row home. And this was a big possum to get up on his four legs and stare at me through the door, the red eyes. And I jumped up and I stood at the porch and the thing barely backed away and he backed away like, stood at the end of the porch. He stood at the end of the porch and he's staring at me at those red eyes. And it occurs to me, I'm not scaring this possum. This possum thinks he can take me. And at the same moment, I hear my brother coming in the back door. And my brother comes in and he saunters in. And he stands next to me and I say, Matt, look at this. And he stands next to me and the possum is now noticing the two of us. And that's when the possum backed down and he walked <laughs> away. And it dawned on me, there's something to this strut thing. <laughs> that possum, I was not intimidating enough to scare the possum. And it dawned on me that it's a tough town and I should learn to strut. But I, I, I went back to California and after 12 years, somebody finally said for about the 10th time I said, I'm going home for Christmas. They said, when is California going to be your home? And I realized never, that my home is always going to be here. And I moved back here. Thank you. Thank you.